Check the focus of your projector lens. This test pattern should appear sharp and clear at the center as well as in all four corners of the screen. Now adjust the volume control so that the sound can be heard in all parts of the room. Immediately following this announcement, you will see a flash and hear a beep. These should happen at the same time. If you heard the beep before you saw the flash, make the bottom loop longer. If you heard the beep after you saw the flash, make the bottom loop shorter. If your projector is set, let's try it again. Your film is now ready to be shown. In recent years, a political revolution has swept Africa, creating many new and independent nations. But independence does not automatically eliminate poverty. Africa is poor, and its long struggle for economic well-being is just beginning. Until the mid-1950s, Africa was a continent of colonies. Britain, Belgium, France, and Portugal controlled most of her lands. These European powers had come to Africa in search of raw materials, such as rubber and copper, to supply their expanding home industries. Under their rule, not enough attention was given to improving the living conditions and education of Africans. Today, the map of Africa has changed. Many new nations have emerged, all eager to develop their own economies, free from foreign domination. But there are enormous problems. African soils are generally not fertile, and crop yields are small. Yet, eight out of 10 Africans must make their living as farmers. There are huge dry areas where, without irrigation, nothing can be grown. While in equatorial regions, dense forests make it difficult to clear the land for agriculture. Here, farming is on the most primitive level. All of the hard work is done by hand. These farmers live in small villages where they must make or grow everything they need to live. This is called a subsistence economy. Even mats and baskets must be handmade from the fibers of the sisal plant. Few Africans go hungry, but their diet is not well balanced and disease is common. Most subsistence villages are isolated. Lack of improved roads and modern transportation make it difficult for people to reach cities where they could sell some of their produce. One of the first steps towards modernization has been the building of many new roads. With a way to reach market, subsistence farmers are learning to grow crops which they can sell for cash, such as tobacco and cotton.
this family will have no trouble selling its cotton in the city. With the money earned, they can buy equipment to make their work easier. But a country with only one or two cash crops can be hurt by falling prices on the world market. For example, West African farmers are producing more cocoa than ever, but are receiving less money for it. Africans know that for a strong, stable economy, they must develop manufacturing, but this requires large sums of money. In the past, foreign companies financed nearly all industrialization. Thousands of Africans still work in European-owned steel mills, mines, and plantations. Foreign companies are not eager to invest in factories which make consumer goods for Africans. This is because the average African is poor and the companies would make little profit in producing only for him. In many areas, barter is still the main form of exchange. Some entire African countries have less buying power than a small American city. To help solve the problem, many African governments may join together to form a larger, common market, such as was done in Western Europe. Up to now, loans from foreign countries have helped manufacturing to get started. But eventually, the needed capital must come from Africans themselves. As more money comes into the country from the sale of cash crops, Africans are being encouraged to save and invest. In Kenya, private capital helped to build this modern shoe factory. Developments like this provide jobs with good wages, and many Africans are leaving their villages to work in the cities. As more people pour in, the population of the cities is mushrooming. In the business district, modern buildings are going up. Here, a market economy is developing, in which people sell goods and services to one another. Some Africans are beginning to prosper. This is Kwame and his wife, Ama. Kwame is a local businessman who has finally saved enough money to buy his first car. The salesman is anxious to show off the mechanical features. But Ama is more interested in comfort. Kwame lives in a government-built suburb on the outskirts of the city. Suburbs like this are beginning to replace the slums that circle all African cities. the change is taking place in the cities. In Batuli, in East Africa, tribes that roam the land with their cattle are being settled in small communities and taught modern agriculture. Here, a family can make a better living from a small farm than by grazing cattle from one pasture to another. More important, some Africans have learned to make a living by specializing in new skills. This is the sign of a developing economy, 
when people do not have to spend all their time seeking food. For example, Kamal was a Batuli farmer who made furniture for himself. Now, so many people want his furniture that he has gone into business. But a successful program like the Batuli farming scheme requires financing and above all, skilled instructors. Shortages of trained people are one of Africa's greatest problems. In new universities, young Africans are being trained as engineers, scientists, and technicians. But it will be many years before there will be enough specialists for a modern economy. For Africa, economic development will not be easy. Farmers must be converted to cash crop growers. Modern roads are needed to transport the agricultural produce to market and bring back modern goods to the villages. Capital must be raised to build industry. and to harness hydroelectric power. Industry will help stabilize the economy and more important, provide jobs which will permit Africans to raise their level of living. How long will it be before Africa achieves a modern economy? It will depend on the hard work, skills, and imagination of Africans themselves.